what exactly is mucormethosis or black fungus as it's called? How common is it? How serious is it? How much should we be losing sleep over this? Or is it only for people with diabetes and then having steroids? So, uh, black fungus or mucormycosis uh, is, a, is a condition that's been seen in people who are immunocompromised and a large chunk of them are diabetic. As an endocrinologist, I would be seeing maybe a couple of cases a year. Uh, typically in insulin dependent diabetics, when they have diabetic ketoacidosis or diabetic coma and they end up with all those kinds of complications. It is a fungus that is present pretty commonly everywhere. In fact, it can commonly be found even in the nasal mucosa of normal people. So the fungus itself is, is, is there. It's the, it's the field that it's present in that makes a difference. So when the body's defenses are compromised, then this fungus takes on a semi-lethal or a lethal form in the sense it rapidly invades, grows over the bones, it grows into the blood vessels, uh, you know, and it's typically found in the nose or eyes, teeth, you know, this whole facial area. But we have seen patients who had lung uh, uh, mucormycosis, we have seen patients who had intestinal mucormycosis, I'm talking in general. So by and large, it happens in people who are very severely diabetic, but it can happen in cancer patients and other immunocompromised patients also. It happens when, when the, the, the diabetes is not controlled. It particularly happens when they have acidosis, you know, like uh, uh, that sometimes happens in sick patients, especially uh, with diabetes. And then this takes over. Now, anyone who's been through this kind of uh, pandemic, this kind of uh, COVID kind of situation with uncontrolled diabetes, you know that di blood glucose dramatically goes up in COVID. And it goes up because of uh, A, any infection pushing up the blood glucose. B, we think perhaps that COVID per se could be doing something to the glucose metabolism, metabolism or insulin secretion that's being studied. And thirdly, with the high use of steroids, uh, the sugars go through the roof. A combination of all these plus the compromise in immunity produced by a serious condition like COVID-19 can lead to a situation where that fungus just proliferates. And therefore, a couple of weeks or some days after discharge or after recovery from COVID, our ophthalmology and ENT colleagues are beginning to find this infection. Now, two, two more sentences. Number one, it's certainly not as common as it's being made out to be in terms of absolute numbers. We haven't seen that many. Some areas have, some areas in Gujarat, some in Maharashtra, but we are collating data from all centers to see. But if you look at relative increase, it's a very significant increase from what I, people have seen in earlier years, what our ENT colleagues have seen to now. I mean, I think the first thing I would say is probably reassurance of the majority of people, because I think that's going to be very, very important in this whole picture. And I think that needs to be the first point to say, as Dr. Mittal has very clearly stated, the mo most important part of this is to state that uh, we are in a position whereby very few people actually, actually get it. I think that's the first point to say. Second of all, I think quite clearly which has been said it is due to use of steroids in a more indiscriminate way which is what we are being challenged with rather than actually this is something that's running through the whole population so i think that's the first point i would say when it does happen it is extremely rare to happen and it is worrying but again in the overall scheme of things it is something which is also preventable by judicious use of treatment 